I'll send you to Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Split. No matter what platform you're watching this on, you're probably using the internet. Unless you're those creepy guys who just use torrents, you know who you are. However, internet penetration is not everywhere like some of you might think. In fact, a lot of countries, especially Nigeria, struggles with it. Last year, we were at 38.7%, give or take. And by 2027, we're hoping to be at 60%. Take those numbers with a big ball of salt because those numbers don't factor in unique IPs, uh, multiple systems within a location, etc., etc. Elon Musk, SpaceX with Starlink is hoping to change all that. With internet broadband access, you can get anywhere, regardless of whether you live in the hill Himalayas or back in Kotangora Mountain. Let's talk about Starlink. Okay guys, before we talk about how this thing works and I test it and it set it up and of course I game with it, let me show you what's in the box when you order a Starlink setup. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of junk up here, I guess to protect the satellite from being bussed around. Okay, first thing up is the base. This is the base. This is what's going to hold up the articulating dish and I'll explain what that is in a minute. Out of steel. This is the Starlink dish itself. This houses a bunch of technical arrays that can automatically point antennas and funny, yeah, again, without getting too technical, this thing is self-articulating, meaning it'll move and orientate itself to the right direction to point to the satellite it needs to connect to. Okay, and it has a wire. Ah, ah. Okay, got a little diagram to show you, you know, for dummies. And then you have the cable that connects to the antenna. Hold on, let me put the dish on one side. It's a pretty long cable. I'll check exactly how long this is. I'm guessing this end goes into the router. This is the Starlink router. Word has it that the SSID for this is called Stinky. I don't know, Elon Musk is trying to be funny. This houses your power, and this is what connects to the dish. Okay, what else is in there? And of course, a power cable, because you need power, duh. And this guy, which we don't care about. And that's it, that's everything in the box for Starlink. Now let's, let's talk about how this all comes together. So this is everything in the box. We're gonna go out and do a setup, but right now let's talk about how exactly Starlink works. Okay, wait, this isn't in the box. This, one, this is my pixel, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Now, Starlink has done this in a way that you don't need an engineer to set it up, like most fiber or broadband that someone has come and wire up your house and yada yada blah blah, none of that. It is designed so you can just buy this pack, whether you're on the go and you're trucking far away, okay, maybe not in the desert, but you should have zero requirements for engineering skills. And in fact, they left a little diagram in here that says basically what I have to do is put the dish in the base, plug the wire to the modem, plug the power to the modem, download the Starlink app, and that's it. Okay, a little more to that, and I'll explain what's a little more. The Starlink app has a feature that lets you point it to the sky, and we'll show it to you in a second, that so you can find a space that doesn't have obstructions because this thing needs a clear line of sight because you're communicating with a satellite in space, literally, which is really cool. Now, typically your connections are connecting to what you call geostatic satellites, and they're really far. That's why if you try to ping those and, 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 and latency is how you measure your average ping, communications back and forth, is how long it takes that signal to get there and come back. Every time you do something on the internet, the speed is how it measures the latency. It's called latency and is measured in MS, milliseconds. So those satellites are about 35,000 kilometers away and they're really far away. So it'll take about 600 plus milliseconds to go back and forth. There's a great annotation on the, on the SpaceX Starlink website that sort of breaks this down. So the satellite Starlink communicates with is not as far as the geostatic satellites. They're just about 500 kilometers away from Earth. So they're much closer. So every time you send a message, that ping is gonna come back shorter, which means, well, faster, which means your latency will be much quicker. You're looking at 20 milliseconds versus 600 milliseconds. That's a world of difference. Hence, broadband internet. That's why you have speed. Secondly, to get that kind of connection at that low base, because looking at it logically, if this was the Earth, 
and you're this close, you can only cover so much area at a time. That's why Starlink needs a lot of their satellites out there to cover broad areas, and that's why they're rolling it out gently. I think they have over 2,000 satellites as we speak, shooting for like 4,000 in a few years more, but they need that. And because this is self-articulating, in fact, this is the first commercially available uh, self-articulating antenna satellite that you can buy, because it then redirects itself to communicate directly with that satellite that's orbiting out there, and then send you back your signal, and boom, you have broadband internet. That's the theory, and it works. Elon figured it out. Is this going to destroy the market for other internet service providers? Yeah, there's a lot of complications, which I'll explain at the end, especially if you live in Nigeria right now, especially about access and payment and, and what you plan to do with it. But we'll get into that later. Right now, we need to go from here into setup. And after setup, we are gonna do the really important thing with it, which is gaming. Of course, that's why people buy the internet. And then there's work, and then there's talking to your family. And then there's checking your email. Not in that order, but gaming will always be at the top, at the top. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so we're gonna try to find a clear line of sight somewhere here. Uh, almost impossible given all the trees and cars and human stuff everywhere. But we'll see if it works. If you, it's odd that, you know, this looks exactly like the SpaceX logo. It's a funny Easter egg there. Okay, so this base goes in here. There's a groove. Yeah, there's a groove right there that lets you slide it in. So you can't just put it any way you want. So that groove slides in there. See that? The app is meant to help you find a clear line of sight. So let me show you how that works while I wire this into the house. I don't know who this genius is that wired to tie these things together. So the wires are like braided. So you, now you have to like unbraid them. Did they think someone was gonna steal them out of the box or something? This one or this one? Uh, this one, right? Yeah. Scan the entire sky. I'm ready. Point your camera up. There's lots of dots and stuff. So there's no, there's no coverage there. And it scans the whole sky. Okay, so we're back. It's a lot of work, but they did promise you didn't need any technical expertise to get this set up, and it was true. All you needed was to take the dish out, put it in the base, plug the wire into the modem, download the app, point it at the sky, and it tells you if it's clear enough or not. If it's not clear enough, it tells you that it's not a good spot, you need to move it to another spot. And when it does find the perfect spot, it does automatically articulate and sets itself up. Bob's your uncle. In terms of the gaming, as you can see for yourself here, you can game with it. It does give you broadband speed as promised. Downloads got up to almost over 100 meg, depending on where your position is. We're gonna do some more testing. I'm gonna take it somewhere further down, uh, further into Lucky. I guess that's where it's designed for, for areas where, it, you know, they're not walls up in your face like my neighbor's wall. I could literally, it's just right here. Anyway, that's a different story. But I will test that and I'll let you know. But for gaming, in comparison to what I have now as broadband at home, it's, not that much difference in terms of download. It is faster, what am I saying, in terms of download speed, much faster. Like I said, over 100 meg for when I get here. But latency is still a bit of a struggle. And that is, it's a complication of several things. A, how much servers are available for that game, uh, where the satellite is at the time, are there walls. What I can say for sure is that yes, it is broadband as promised anywhere on the planet without infrastructure. 
But if you're a hardcore gamer and want like zero latency, I will do more testing to see if this is it for you. But right now, I am not entirely convinced it will give you that perfect latency based on my current location. When I go over to the second location, I will let you guys know how it goes. I'll try some Call of Duty, Apex, maybe some Fortnite, and then we'll see how it goes. It would have been worth the money if not for the complications where I am now. Starlink is supposed to be $600. However, when you convert that using CBN rate, that's way more than what you see on the SpaceX on the Starlink website that says 200 and something K. You're really paying probably double that, 400 and something grand or, or something like that. And that's because nobody uses CBN rates. You need the dollar card. Your dollar card is going to convert that black market rate. Whatever you do, if you get someone to buy it for you, you need to give them back their dollars and you're gonna buy it at black market rate. So it's a bit of a struggle. A monthly subscription is supposed to be $19 a month, especially if you convert from what it was. But again, given the dollar rate, you're probably gonna be paying north of 40,000, 40,000 there. Again, is it worth to get faster downloads, maybe not perfect latency? You could probably even get higher broadband speeds and that's the cost of an entire setup of other broadband services that exist today at 40, 50,000 naira, but that would be your monthly subscription. For Starlink, if you're running it from Nigeria based on the current, you know, exchange rate. And that's a big downer. And if the aim is to give people who don't have internet access, access, you're probably living in areas that are not in the metropolis or far towards the edge of town. And I don't know if that makes sense from an economic standpoint of spending that cash for, you know, watching Paw Patrol. Uh, let's sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's really cool, but right now, given what's happening in the country, it's just out of reach for a lot of people, which it's designed for, in my opinion. So something's got to give to make this the perfect internet access module. Is it competition for existing services? Not exactly. Your mobile data works almost everywhere in Nigeria as it is, and it's dirt cheap as it stands. And the bulk of people don't need broadband. They just need to access, they just need to swipe and access Instagram and Facebook, watch a movie every now and then. And again, they don't need that much dedicated power. There's a very small percentage of people who are dedicated gamers that need extreme or people who are developing software internationally or need some form of broadband that needs that much power. There's not that many people, maybe a few businesses. But again, there are business modules that I think are very competitive in, compa in comparison to this and probably would cost you less in the long run. So those are the things to consider if you're looking at Starlink. And that's my two cents. We can chat some more in the comments below and debate back and forth. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.